morning to everyone present here today. The topic that we are going to learn is page three only. Now, the class we've already done the chapter page three. So here, this word is coming page three. Can somebody tell me what is page three? Okay. Can somebody tell me five types of page three is you? Okay. Yeah. Puff, filler, short crust. Very good. I'm missing few of them. I'll tell you all the seven types of page three again. A revision that we have done in the class. We've done flaky page three. We've done uh, puff pastry, we've done strudel, we've done short crust, we've done danish. Okay, these are the basic pastries that we've done. Now, why do we need a pastry cream here? A big question. Now, whenever we make pastries, we just don't, don't bake them. But yes, we do fill them with a cream. We fill them with a custard. We fill them with a custard. So the word custard is very important to you. Now, as I told you in semester one about this word custard, we've already learned about this word custard. Custard, there are two types. One is savory and one is uh, sweet. Savory custard, I've already told you about one of the most important soup that is consomme royal. The garnish of that soup is nothing but a savory custard that is steamed, okay? Baked in the oven, the water bath. So, savory custard we've also seen in your uh, quiche. We've learned quiche, how to make it. So, one of the most amazing uh, ingredient that is uh, savory custard for your quiche. So, the difference between our short curls, uh, uh, quiche and a tart that is nothing but your custard now today we are going to learn about all the sweet custard now what is pastry cream pastry cream is nothing but a thick custard that we are going to learn today there are different types of pastry cream that we are going to learn today now it's there in the further slide that i am going to talk about each custard now what is basically a custard custard is nothing but a thick sauce now the thickness can vary from the depending on the custard that we are going to make if i am going to talk about creme anglaise Creme anglaise will be a thick custard which will be of a coating consistency. Now whenever we consider about liquids, whenever we talk about liquids, we always speak about the consistency. The one word that comes in your head that should be consistency. We've learned in semester one the three basic consistency. One was pouring, one was dropping and one was coating. So today we are going to talk about C. Here the photo also speaks about the coating. Here the spoon is coating the custard. This photo where you can see that is nothing but your creme anglaise, the slide will come ahead. This custard is very thick as compared to your creme anglaise. This is your creme patisserie. Now the texture, oh, sorry, the consistency of this custard will be thick, will be of dropping consistency. So that can be piped. This cannot be piped. This can be poured on your cakes or anything that you're making. Now, we are also going to talk about the various custards today, how to make them, what are the precautions we need to take, okay? Let us see the next slide. Here we, are the different, the, here we have the different pastry cream that we are learning today. We have creme anglaise here, we have creme patisserie, we have creme chibouts, we have creme chantilly, we have creme capris, we have creme plum beers and lemon curd. Okay, lemon curd we have already made in the practical. We have made creme anglaise, we have made creme patisserie. Okay, sorry, creme patisserie we have not made. It's there in semester 6 and semester 5 if you make your English. Now, let us start with creme anglaise. Creme anglaise I have taught many times in practical. Can somebody tell me what is creme anglaise? Is that boy? The four basic ingredients of creme anglaise. Nobody can answer. Okay. Let us begin. I will give you a revision again. It's a revision happening here because we've made this in the practical so many times. Many times we've done this. Now, creme anglaise is basically a French word. Let us move to the slide. So it will be interesting. Yeah. Creme anglaise is basically a French word which literally means in English French word which literally means uh, English cream or English custard. Now, the literal meaning anglaise is English in French. It's a French word which means English. Now, what is creme anglaise based? Creme anglaise is a basic custard. Okay? It is also considered as a mother sauce for confectionery. Now, if I talk about ice cream, if I talk about parfait, if I talk about uh, any dessert, now parfait is again a very classical French dessert. Okay? The word parfait literally means perfect. So, if you want to make a souffle again on a classical French dessert, a souffle can be a savory, can be sweet. You made souffle in the practical. So, we are going to talk about anglaise today and how to make a game. It's a revision, so I am just going to tell you what we have done in the practical revision now. In practical, we normally do not take the hot milk. The reason I told you in the practical also the right way of making custard, how we make in the hot milk, that we didn't issue that because there is a chances of students splitting the custard. We don't want curdling happening because for the beginner it is very difficult to balance the temperature. See, cooking for me is always about application and withdrawal of heat. So I don't want you to burn your custard. So, for making a creme anglaise, these are the four golden ingredients that are written on the board. One egg yolk, okay, one number, you can take sugar that will be at least uh, 30 grams for sweetness. The sugar which is preferred is caster sugar, okay. Milk will be at least 120 ml, 
and vanilla according to your flavor it will be 140 is it now in hotels they use vanilla pod but we have never used it plus because that's very expensive and not uh, very readily available in the market now how to make this custard so basic custard okay thick custard i told you the consistency will be of coating you see the spoon is coating the custard how to make it what precautions i'm gonna explain you right away now for making creme anglaise you need to take your Egg yolks and sugar, you need to keep whisking it, okay? When you see the sugars have almost dissolved and the color of the egg yolk changes to white a little bit. You need to take your hot milk, now, that is the real way of making creme anglaise. This word is known as tempering. Now the word tempering literally comes uh, to certain word that means temperature. You are going to make sure that the temperature of both the things, something which is there in your bowl, that is your sugar and uh, eggs, should be equal to the temperature of the milk. So the hot milk will go and you need to keep whisking it. Now, what care one must take when you are making this custard? You should not let your egg yolks burn or curdle or cook. So you need to take that anglais, you need to take your mixture, you need to take that hot milk, you need to mix it and immediately keep it on a double boiler. Now the equipment or the tool that you are going to use is going to be a wooden spoon. If you make creme anglais with your whisk, you will never be able to make a creme anglais. Guys, we are not making a sabayon here. Now what is sabayon? Something that we have taught. We've learned something in semester one, Sabayon. I also told you about Zaraglion, a dish, okay, a sweet dish. So today I will be again speaking about Sabayon because we are not making a Sabayon, we are making creme anglaise. Creme anglaise is a thick custard. Never ever use a whisk because when you use whisk, what happens? Aeration form. You don't want aeration. Can you see there is any uh, light thing here? No. It's a thick custard. You are going to use a wooden spoon to continuously stir. When you need to stop it, when you see the wooden spoon coats the pack. That is an indication now. What happens to egg yolk and how, what is the thickening agent in your pastry cream here? It's only your egg yolk. Egg yolk thickens your custard. Now guys, there is something called phospholipid lecithin which is present in egg yolk. That acts as an emulsifier. Now if I talk about mayonnaise, yes, who will answer mayonnaise? Yes, that boy. Can you tell me something about mayonnaise? Okay. One answer that I got from, from one of the students, okay, that was asked to the inter in an interview to a student. The guy told mayonnaise is made on a double boiler. That really shocked me. And I was knocked on my heels. Guys, you need to learn your basics very clearly. Mayonnaise is a cold emulsifying butter sauce. Okay. So again, here the only thing that emulsifies is mayonnaise and your hollandaise. Again, our hollandaise is a warm emulsifier sauce. So these both are mother sauces. Both have egg yolk. So egg yolk, they are doing a very important role in making your mayonnaise and your hollandaise because it acts as an emulsifying agent. Now here, egg yolk, if you cook too much to your custard, now how to cook this custard, I have not yet started with it. I just told you something about tempering. So we should remember about tempering. Once you tempered your milk, okay, with the egg yolks nicely, you take that double, uh, you take that steel bowl and put on a double boiler. Why can't we cook the custard on direct flame? Again, there are chances of splitting the custard. There's something called curdling that we have taught you in cheese making. In cheese making, we need it. Okay, we do it for a purpose, okay, for a reason. But here we do not want curdling. If we curdle our custard, that is gone. We cannot use it, okay. It will not give a good result in our products. Now, here we do not want curdling. So how you can avoid that curdling? First is about temperature. Guys, remember, egg yolk coagulates at 60 degrees centigrade. I also told you about egg whites. Egg whites coagulate at 65. Now what is coagulation? Whenever there is what protein. Now egg yolk and egg white, you all know the main components are protein. Okay, That's a, egg yolk does have fat, but again it has protein. So you should remember albumin that we've taught in semester one. You do not want to cook that. The egg yolks will be only used, so you don't want a temperature above 60. You want something below 60, so you are using a double boiler. You just want that heat to co co cover your bowl without the water the water should not be touching your bowl okay if the water touches the bowl again the temperature will rise up so you don't want the temperature too much otherwise your idea will cook okay so you want the thickening to be happening once you see this thickening that will immediately happen if you're making a small portion now we've already used this recipe for a lot of desserts we've made mousse we've made souffle we've made parfait okay we've made bavarua something called bavarua yes french dessert we made now what about mousse why i'm going to talk about mousse because mousse is one of the Desserts where we use creme anglaise. Okay, that's a basic custard. The reason I told you it's a basic custard, it's a mother mother sauce for confectionery because you use this custard for everything almost. All the desserts, the base is your creme anglaise. Now, if I'm going to talk about mousse today, I have also told, taught you in the practical and in the theory class, the chapter, the culinary term mousse. I will be giving a revision of mousse. Why? Because I want you to know about creme anglaise and one more pastry cream will come ahead. That is creme chantilly or creme chantilly. Two pronunciation. Now. What about mousse? Mousse have three basic 
parts. So first is your base or body, so that will be your creme anglaise. Any mousse you make, you make a coffee mousse, that is your coffee mousse in French, cafe, okay. Chocolate mousse in English, it is chocolate mousse. You make any mousse, okay, citron mousse, that is a lemon mousse, any mousse you make, any flavor mousse, the basic, your uh, basic custard will remain always creme anglaise, okay. That is your basic custard. Now, remember the second part of mousse, that is a setner. That is a setner or a binding agent, that is your gelatin all the time. And the third one is your lifner. That will be a creme chantilly in mousse. Now we'll come back to creme anglaise. Okay, so I just gave you an example where we can use this, this sauce. Okay, it's a dessert sauce. It's a basic mother sauce for all the confectionery products. This is also used in a lot of uh, Christmas preparation. If I talk about Christmas pudding, yes, definitely we use creme anglaise for your Christmas pudding. Okay, we made Albert pudding. Yes, definitely we made Albert pudding in the practical. Again, we can use the sweet sauce as an accompaniment for your Christmas pudding, for your Albert pudding. Okay, now, let me talk something about creme anglaise. As I already told you, anglaise, what is now, there's a, there's a cloud, there's a lot of clouds coming here, that is for your understanding and that you should be noting down. What is anglaise? Anglaise is a French word which literally means English, okay? So it's a basic English style custard. So we've done about mm -hmm. anglaise a lot. So this is the recipe that you should remember for 1 idea of at least 30 grams of sugar, 120 ml milk and 1 for teaspoon of vanilla that we'll be using. We'll be moving to the next pastry cream that is your creme patisserie. I'll just wrap the board and then I'll start in the patisserie. Which literally means pastry cream. Uh, guys, remember, creme patisserie again one of the most important pastry cream. Again, this was all there on my photo. The reason I kept these two photos on the first slide because these two are the basic and the most important custard that we're going to learn. Creme patisserie again is used in many custards. It's used in many, many custards. Can somebody tell me where we, we, we've learned in the previous? Anybody? I've already told you in one of the pastries that goes as a filling for creme um, uh, patisserie. Yes, that boy. Can you tell me? Okay. No answer. Again, I get watch from the students. Again, I will tell you something about creme patisserie. So you should know it literally means pastry cream. I'll write here for your answer. So creme patisserie in English literally means pastry cream. Now, what is the difference between a creme patisserie and a creme anglaise? That is again one of the questions that is always asked in an interview if you apply for bakery. Again, remember the difference here is about few ingredients that you add more here. That is your butter, custard powder, and Fresh cream. Now custard powder is nothing but a cornstarch flavored with your emulsion, flavored with any of your flavoring and your uh, coloring agent is there. So you can also make custard powder at home. So remember the main ingredient in uh, custard powder is cornstarch. So remember that cornstarch thickens your custard. If you see the custard consistency, it will be very thick as compared to your anglaise. Now, first thing that you're going to use is egg yolk, sugar. Again, the milk will be hot. So you're going to temper your milk and you're going to do something called tempering again. So you're going to take your sugar, you're going to mix your egg yolk with sugar. Nicely, you're going to take the flavoring agent later. Flavoring agent will be added later on. Now, what difference is between creme anglaise and creme patisserie? Creme patisserie, you can use a direct flame. Okay? You don't need to use a double boiler. But again, the temperature should be controlled. If you do not if you're not able to control the temperature, what problem can happen? You can again burn your custard. Again, remember the egg yolks are there, they can get coagulated. You don't want coagulation to be happening, you only want the thickening to be happening. So, here, one ingredient that will help you to thicken is your cornstarch. Today, you want something called gelatinization of starch. Now, what is gelatinization of starch? You've already learned in semester one. I told you when we make bread, there's something called gelatinization of starch happens and something called coagulation of protein happens. That's nothing but the bread, when it gets structured, it becomes firm. So these two words are very much into consideration. Now, cornstarch needs to be gelatinized. That will only happen when you apply some heat. Okay? That will thicken up. Again, you need to use your milk. You need to take your egg yolk, sugar, you keep whisking it. Okay, and then you add your remaining ingredients, slurry of corn flour. Now, whenever you, we use corn flour or corn custard powder, we take the cold milk and we mix a uh, mimic it, sorry, slurry out of it. And then you can add the slurry, you can mix everything, and again, you can take it on the direct flame and you just cook. Now, you can use a whisk because you don't want lumps in your custard. What happens if you get lumps? Not to worry, you just take your custard and you use your strainer. Okay, you can use a conical strainer, you can use a round strainer, you can just pass it through a strainer, you get everything proper in the right uh, consistency in the right uh, uh, color as well now 
butter. Yes, one of the main ingredients of your current pathology is butter. At the end, once your custard is made, you add butter. The reason we add butter, it acts as an enriching agent. It enriches everything. Okay, so your sauce is more rich and more thick as compared to your omelet. Now, where do we use creme patisserie? A big question. Creme patisserie is used in a lot of desserts, a lot of pastries. Now, if I talk about profit roll, okay, also known as the cream puff. Okay, these two words are nothing but they are a small, I would say, a cabbage size uh, looking, cabbage looking uh, pastry. Now, it is a variation of a shoe pastry. So remember, profit roll is a variation of a shoe pastry. I've already taught you in culinary term. I've already taught you in pastry chapter, shoe pastry. So you might be knowing why it is called shoe pastry. I already told you, shoe pastry is nothing but a French word. The word shoe, you are writing again for your understanding you've done in the past. Shoe literally means cabbage. I also told you why it looks like cabbage because once you bake this small tiny profit roll, when it's puffed up in the oven, the only reason it puffs up because of steam. Steam is the only mechanical leveling agent that cooks your shoe. Now once you see these are the shoe, after few minutes in the oven you see it puffs up. They are hollow, there's nothing inside so you need a custard. Or you can see, I told you profit roll is not necessarily, it can be only sweet. You can make a savory version of, of it as well. So you can cut it inside from the top and you can fill your custard. Now normally when we make croquet mousse, again croquet mousse I showed you the photos in the previous uh, class when I was teaching you about the shoe pastry. One of the most classical uh, preparation from the shoe pastry is your croquet mousse. Croquet mousse is a French word for your French wedding cake. So French wedding cake, I told you, okay, the word croquet mousse literally means crunches in mouth. So you have this tiny profit roll again arranged into nine conical okay like a pyramid it is cake a very tall cake okay which is filled with your cramped patisserie so you need your basic cluster to fill a lot of desserts now cramped patisserie today we will be seeing it is used to make other pastry things as well so even this acts as a mother sauce we have now again we have one more mother sauce but we do not consider this as a mother sauce but because it is not giving you base Creme anglaise, like how I said, it is a mother sauce because it gives you base for all the things. Whenever you make an ice cream, you make a mousse, you make souffle, you make parfait, you make bavrua, everything you need, you have creme anglaise. Now, pastry game, I already told you the uses of pastry games. You can use it in many uh, desserts, okay? So it's a thick custard, you can use it as a filling. So one of the most popular preparations, that was a profit roll. And that profit roll is again used for one of the most popular desserts or a popular cake, I would rather say. A French wedding cake known as croquet bouche. You can fill that uh, pastry cream into that and you can make your dessert. Let, now moving to the next slide, that will be your creme chibouche. Again, I'll be erasing something so I can write something on the board. Very good. And Saint Andre. Now, creme, you all know it's cream. Now, basically, this is a custard that is derived from creme patisserie. As you can say, one part of creme patisserie. Yes, I just spoke about creme patisserie. I told you how to make it. Again, I will be speaking about creme patisserie because it is coming here. You should know again what I just spoke. Creme patisserie, you take all your ingredients, okay? You take your hot milk, you temper everything, and you bring it on the pan. You cook it till the gelatinize, the starch is gelatinized, and everything is thick. You remove it, you put your butter, and you cover and eat. So that's your custard. So your creme patisserie is mixed with one part of dash. Now, guys, that answer will come from this clue. This is one of the most important desserts, the photo. I will be talking about that dessert here. I will be writing what the dessert is. But we will be talking something about stiffly beaten egg white, which is known as. This cloud is so that I get the answer. There's somebody from there? It's very good. Meringue. The answer is meringue. What is meringue? I have already showed you in practical when we were making macaroons. Macaroons cannot be made without meringue. Okay? Seven, five students were making pavlova. I showed you. I took you to the bakery and I showed you what pavlova is. So that is what the basic. Ingredient for your pavlova, for your macaron is your meringue. Now I also told you in semester one there are three types of meringue. So I just give you idea of the basic three meringue again: French, Swiss, and Italian. Now if I want to make a French meringue, these three are different. How? What is the difference? We'll just look here. Now you should be knowing your stiffly beaten egg whites. Now which meringue goes in this custard? You can use a French one because that's the basic custard. It's the basic meringue and it's very easy to make. You just have to take your caster sugar and your egg whites which should be done until it is stiff. Now again there are different types of peaks. Stiff peaks, soft peaks. Here you want the stiff peaks. Now again when you use Swiss method. Now what is Swiss meringue? Swiss meringue is normally used for some of the desserts. Now this meringue is 
also known as semi cooked meringue because you take a double boiler okay there is a bowl the water heats and then you stiffly beat your egg whites with sugar here again the stiffness is little harder so the egg whites will be more stiff here the last one the most stiff meringue that you get that is the italian meringue known as italian meringue because here you almost cook the meringue how by addition of your sugar syrup here you will be adding some amount of caster sugar in the initial stage and then later on the according to the recipe the sugar will be cut down and you will be using soft boil stage sugar so you will be boiling the sugar to 112 to 116 degrees centigrade that will be a soft boil sugar stage and you will be adding all your sugar in thin string and you will be mixing your uh, your manai that is your italian manai so that is the basic question it is always asked in interview what is manai so the answer will be stiffly beaten egg whites okay so the answer comes here so what is creme chibous and why i told you what, how this name came why it has two names now chibous was the great person his name was chef m chibous who was that guy he invented this dessert and there was a reason why this pastry cream was invented for this dessert the name of the dessert is gato saint andre again it was a this uh, dessert that was dedicated okay now how to make this dessert uh, this dessert is nothing but a very classical i would say it, it can come under category of gato also it it has a base of puff pastry which is uh, filled with uh, pate or shoe filled with your uh, creme chantilly what is creme chantilly we're going to talk in the later part and it is topped with the base is topped with your creme chibous so creme chibous guys it should be very easy it should be going in your head it is only two things mixed together equal amount you take one part of your creme pastry to mix with one part of your uh, uh, one part of your meringue which is nicely just beaten with your sugar and we are using french meringue that's the most simplest to make okay when you add the french meringue in your pastry cream what happens it becomes a little lighter the color also changes it becomes a little whitish okay and it becomes more light so that that meringue is nothing but foam okay that's as a foam it acts as airy Form is really we told we we learned about the mechanical leavening agent. There are two types of mechanical leavening agent. One is air, one is steam. Okay, so air is only you you only get air when you cream something or you form something. So your meringue is nothing but a foam mixture of your egg whites and sugar. Okay, so I was talking about gato sen ponder. Yes. So this cake was invented by again Mr. Shibus. Okay, who was again one of the most uh, Amazing professional, okay, professional person from bakery. Now this dish was made in France, okay, in his uh, cake shop. That cake shop is also known as Chibous, okay. So he has named after his name. And what that M Chibous did, he took one amount of creme pâtisserie and he added some amount of meringue and he invented that pastry cream for one of the most, uh, I would say, popular. Gato or preparation, under me you can say sweet preparation. You can see these profit rolls which are. Kept here, okay. And center, it's all about your fresh uh, creme chantilly, and in the middle layer, the first layer is of your creme chibous. Okay. Next slide, ma'am. We're going to talk about creme chantilly again. The one of the most popular. Okay, so I'll make five stars here. Why? There's a reason. One of the most popular pastry cream that is used in many dishes. Okay, many sweet preparation. Now. Creme chantilly or creme chantilly. There are two pronunciations. One is the French and one is the English. Okay. So creme chantilly is basically the English pronunciation. Some French people they say it's creme chantilly, not chantilly. Okay. Now, how to make creme chantilly? For making creme chantilly, you need a whipping cream. Now, what is a whipping cream, guys? Now, there is a confusion in many uh, students, and there is confusion throughout the world. Some chefs they consider whipping cream is always sweet, but that's wrong. Now, I have taught you something. Chapter yes, I did teach you a chapter of creams. Uh, in that chapter, creams. If you go and see your notes, okay, you will be seeing the different types of creams: single cream, double cream, whipping cream. Again, comes here. Remember, any cream that has minimum thirty-eight percent of fat content. Now I'm stressing minimum thirty-eight percent fat content. That cream can only be termed as a cream that can be whipped. Now whipping means we just whip, uh, use a whisk and you whip it up. Whipping is nothing but when you incorporate air. So again, one thing that comes. I just gave you example of mechanical leavening agent. I again revise it. Mechanical leavening agents are of two types. We have done in semester one raising agent. We have mechanical, biological, and chemical. In biological, you have yeast. In chemical, you have your baking soda, baking powder, cream of tartar. Okay. Again, now 
mechanical navigation it's very very important here you have to one is steam steam does play a, their work in the oven so whenever steam only the steam is only uh, playing its uh, role in the oven okay when you can see you put something in the oven it puffs up that's because of the steam because of the moisture present in the product i just give example of pati or shoe shoe pastry the most important leavening agent that is your steam now i will come back to air air is of two types one you when you cream something you mix your sugar with your butter when you make cookies or something or, or a cake or creaming method so you use air again in the form of creaming foaming i just told about meringue meringue is nothing but a stiffly beaten egg whites and sugar already told you about the three meringues i will give you a revision again it is three types of meringue one is french swiss and italian now meringue is nothing but stiffly beaten egg whites and sugar again you beat you incorporate air similarly in whipping cream whipping cream means any cream which can be incorporated with air okay now what disaster what i did when i was a not i would say student in the culinary college but before before when i was in 10th or 12th standard i wanted to make a cake okay i took amul cream from the market that is fresh cream so you are the story i'll be telling about my experience that i did and it was disaster so you should be concentrating so that same thing cannot be done now when i was not that talented and i had not much of knowledge what i did i took that fresh cream i added a lot of icing sugar okay Or powdered sugar also can. And I'll be again talking about icing sugar and powdered sugar again. I'll be revising it. You've done it semester one, I know, but you guys might have forgotten. Hundred percent, okay. So I will be talking about what disaster I did. I took that fresh cream and I used my egg beater and I keep beating it. So I thought that I'll be getting a whipping cream, but you know what the result was? It split up. Remember, everyone, if the cream has less fat content, it cannot be whipped. So the fresh cream which we get in the market, I told you in. Last chapter also when I was teaching you cream and milk product, fresh cream has eighteen percent of fat content. Remember, it is also known as single cream. So the cream that we get in the market, that amul cream or the fresh cream, that is your cooking cream. You can only use it for cooking, but you cannot whip it because it will not be incorporated in air. So there's something that has to be going in your head. Is whipping cream is the only cream which has minimum thirty eight percent fat content, and that fat content will help you to whip your air. Okay, it will it will incorporate it there. Now, what is creme chantilly? Guys, creme chantilly is where you take the whipping cream. Now, some of the students might be getting confused that what we use in the bakery practical or the kitchen practical, we did use whipping cream, but that was not the dairy product. I told you the cream which we get that is of vitreous is of propolite. That is not at all a dairy product. That is nothing but uh, topping that we use. Okay, that is made by emulsifiers. That milk powder, everything is. Took together in the industry, they make an emulsification. I I just again told you what is emulsification: mixing of two or more ingredients together, immiscible ingredients. Okay, so here when we take that cream, it is in liquid form, and we whip it, it becomes okay. So it's just a topping. Here, if you want the real creme chantilly to make, now if you go in abroad, if you go to France, if you go to London, they will not be using that whipping cream. Okay, they will be using their dairy cream, which will be having more fat content. Okay, so the fat content will be at least thirty-eight or above. And then you will be using. Now I also told about something called clotted cream, the cream which has maximum fat content. I told you about high tea. I spoke about scones. That scones classical accompaniment is your clotted cream that has at least fifty five percent of fat content. Also known as your very, uh, I would say, uh, very rich cream. Now here eighteen percent fat content we are going to take. We are going to talk about whipping cream. Whipping cream is at least thirty eight percent of fat content, which is mixed with your icing sugar. Mix with your icing sugar. Now, what is icing sugar, guys? And what is powdered sugar? Again, I will be talking about these two sugars. Okay, powdered sugar. Why it is called powdered sugar? Because you just powder the sugar. Yes, you powder the sugar. The powdered sugar has two more names. One is your white sugar, and one is your confectioner sugar. I also told you why powdered sugar is known as confectioner sugar because that is one of the sugar that is used by confectioner. A person who is working in a confectioner is known as a confectioner. So that confectioner is using that powdered sugar for a lot of his products. He is using for cakes, for biscuits, for cookies, everything, almost every product. So it is also termed as your uh, confectioner sugar. Icing sugar is made with the help of powdered sugar. You take that powdered sugar and you sieve it two to three times. So it becomes lighter. So if you even close your eyes and you take two bowls and you put your fingers inside, you will come to know the difference between icing sugar and powdered sugar because icing sugar will be more lighter than your regular. Powdered sugar, the regular confectioner sugar or your white sugar will be more lighter than the icing sugar, okay? Because it is sieved more, and there's something addition to the icing sugar. We add some amount of corn flour. 
Now what that corn flour does, now as, as we know sugar is hygroscopic in nature, it can attract moisture very quickly, so that corn starch will not allow it to make it hard or brittle. Now, so what to do for making plain chantilly, you take your whisk, okay, if you want to do it manually, you can do, you can use a, a, a egg beater, which is a, a, a mechanical egg beater I am talking about, you take that, or you can also use a machine, okay, a kettle aid, kitchen, kitchen aid that you can use, now, you take that, uh, uh, Green, your dairy green, you put your egg beater, you on that, and you keep beating it and you add some icing sugar. You sweeten that sugar, so you sweeten that cream. So basically, cream chantilly is nothing but your cream, okay, which is sweet, okay. So it's a sweet whipping cream. What I can say in simple words, a sweetened whipping cream, a whipping cream which is sweet. Now, not regular, not necessarily your whipping cream will always be sweet, it can be savory also. If I want to make sauce muslin, I told you in semester one, muslin is a classical accompaniment of your sauce hollandaise. If I want to make muslin, I will be using a whipping cream which is not mixed with sugar, it is just whipped. A whipping cream, see a cream which has 38% fat content can, all, can also be whipped without sugar. Here you want to use it as a pastry cream, you want to use it for your anthrame or your sweet courses. If I want to make a cake, now where to use cream chantilly? As I said, mousse, yes definitely. Mousse, the last part of the mousse, that the main, most important part. Now the word mousse I told you in semester 1 also, semester 2 also in culinary terms, literally means foam. Mousse is a French word which literally means foam. If you see the dictionary meaning, if you translate it means foam. Why it is foam? Because of the texture of the mousse. It is so foamy, it is so airy. So that airiness, that texture, that uh, air I would say is only achieved by your whipping cream. So whipping cream has air. So that cream is so light, you need to add. So whipping cream, that is your cream chantilly. I would, I would not say whipping cream. Again, I will be, if I will be using the word whipping cream, I will be wrong. I will be using cream chantilly because cream chantilly is your sweetened whipping cream. Cream chantilly is your sweetened whipping cream. I need to take that sweetened whipping cream and I need to put it in my mousse. So I take that mousse, I will be folding my, the last step will be folding my whipping cream and I will be taking that egg whites as well. Okay, I won't throw that, that egg whites will again, if I mix that egg white quickly with an egg beater, again I will get foam. So these two ingredients are your main ingredients, they are known as aviator. Okay, that will lift your mousse. Okay, now. One more dish, see, not one more, there are 10 dishes I can name, but few dishes I will name today. Black Forest Cake, a very popular cake. Again, you might have heard of. Again, the main ingredient is your whipping cream, that is a sweet whipping cream, that is a creme chantilly. Okay, any cake we make, if I talk about Gato Creole, Gato Creole is again a very uh, popular fresh fruit cake. Okay, Gato is a French word for fruit cake, which is uh, layered with your creme chantilly. Next, video, next slide I will be beginning. We have cream capris. I'm just show. Okay, now before starting to your cream uh, capris, I will be taking a quick revision. Now I will be asking somebody, yes, Mr. Sylvester, can you tell me what are the basic cream that we've just learned? That's very good cream pathisari, cream anglaise, cream shibus. Very good. And you forgot one more, just I spoke about creme chantilly. So these four custard that I already spoke about. Now I just wanted to tell you about creme patisserie that I forgot in my previous uh, topic. Now creme patisserie has one more name known as your uh, confectioner's custard or confectioner's cream. Now why is it called confectioner's custard? Here the word again confectioner is coming, the person who works in the confectionery. Okay, as I told you about confectioner's sugar, powder sugar in my uh, previous topic. Your pastry cream is used for a lot of desserts. As I said, pastry cream can be a base, a basic custard, can be used for many of your different sauces or different custards. So, that is the reason it is also known as your confectioner's custard. Now, if I talk about cream capris, now cream capris is very simple. I have just spoken about meringue. Now, can somebody tell me what is meringue? Quickly. Yes. Very good. Meringue is just stiffly beaten egg whites with sugar. So you need to beat your uh, sugar, now here again we use your French meringue. I just told you in my previous uh, topic, there are three types of meringue, one is French, Italian and Swiss. Now the reason I am again again stressing on this because this is one of the most hottest questions that is asked in the interview, the different types of meringue. So you should know your three types of meringue, French, Italian and Swiss. Now, the answer here, what will be coming is your cooked meringue and broken. So what you do? You cook your meringue and you break them. Cooked and broken pieces of your meringue. So you take that meringue, you cook it. Now normally we know that meringue can be used as a lot of uh, garnishes in the uh, 
say uh, uh, answer me any answer me if i am making i can use my plating small the line you take that stiffly beaten egg whites and sugar you pipe them small pieces and you bake normally you need to bake it for at least 45 minutes to an hour okay for and 400 degrees uh, temperature it should not be above that it will burn your it will give you too much of color so you don't want so okay so that is your meringue so once your meringue is cooked for your creme capris you take creme chantilly again i spoke about creme chantilly in my previous topic i will be again i'll be giving you a quick revision creme uh, chantilly is nothing but your whipping cream which is mixed with some amount of icing sugar and vanilla essence remember whipping cream is any cream that has at least 38% of fat content you cannot take any cream and you just whip it it will not happen there won't be any addition that you will be getting so you need to take your dairy cream which has at least 38% of fat content you get it in the market okay supermarket whipping cream is available okay the dairy product i'm talking about not the one which we use as a topping now you take that uh, whipping cream or the cream can be dipped you add your icing sugar and you add your oil essence your creme chantilly is ready now you take that creme chantilly and we you mix some amount of your broken and cooked meringue pieces that is your creme capris now your there is one the dessert okay this is a very where the uh, capris is used okay this custard this top with this meringue pieces okay and it is mixed with some amount of fruits that is your creme capris now moving on the next slide that is your creme plombiers creme plombiers again here is a very popular pastry cream now creme for, for plombiers again use with this cream you cannot make creme plombiers if you don't have your creme chantilly so basically again you need your creme chantilly you have that creme chantilly with you you do to add some amount of dash now again did you know what is coolie or do you know what is coolie what is coolie guys anybody coolie now the word coolie many of the students they think that coolie is a station wala coolie wo log ke dimag mein aata hai ki station wala coolie no we are not talking about the person who lifts your baggage or luggage i've taught you coolie is a dessert sauce go and check your book you will be finding that word coolie coolie is nothing but a sauce which is sweet and made with the help of fruits so being fruits the main ingredient i told you whenever we will play desserts we use lot of purees okay so if i want to make very popular raspberry coolie what i'll take i'll take the fresh raspberries or strawberries i'll take them i'll put in the water very little water and some sugar and i'll cook it once i see cooking is done i will puree and i will strain so end product what i get is a very uh, nice colorful and flavorful the fruit definitely has flavor okay when you are adding sugar you have to be very cautious because fruits always have their own sugar that is known as fructose okay fructose is present in sugar, uh, fruits so you need to add a little amount of grain sugar caster sugar okay you can use any of them when you boil it when you see there is boiling happening now you should not overcook it what will happen again caramelization will happen if you overcook your sugar it will burn okay the color will change you just need to give a boil to see everything is dissolved let it cool down puree it strain it you get your coolie that is your fruit coolie remember s is silent it's not coolies it is coolie so coolie is nothing but a fruit puree which is cooked okay and strained okay and then now how to make a creme plombier now creme plombier is basic i would say uh, component for your ice cream if i want to make any flavorful ice cream what i will be doing i will be taking two creme uh, two pastry creams i will be taking anglaise my basic custard will be ready with me i will be having my creme plombier i will be mixing together to them and i will be putting in the ice cream machine or the churner it will be churning for hours and my ice cream is ready so for making ice cream i will be needing something called creme plombier so what i am doing i am taking the fresh cream not necessarily you can only use it for ice cream i can also use it for filling of any of the profit rolls as i said okay i want if i want to make eclair i can make a new version of eclair i can take this uh, very uh, flavorful creme uh, chantilly mix with your fruit coolie or your fruit puree okay that is your creme plombier We will talk about lemon curd. Lemon curd we made in the practical in semester one when we were learning short crust pastry. Again, short crust pastry the variation that we made was tarts in semester one. In semester two we made quiche. Now tarts we made of four types. One was your bakewell tart. I also told you why it is called bakewell tart because of the town. Okay, bakewell in UK. Now we made chocolate tarts. We made lemon curd tarts and we made jam tarts. Lemon curd. Now, can you see the photo here? Yes, definitely you can see. This is the curd that I am talking about. Now it's not a basic curd, okay? Not made with your regular curd, or you just mix something. Why it is called lemon curd? Because it looks 
the texture or I would say the consistency of the custard is like a curd okay but it is very lemony and it is flavored with lemon okay we do add these ingredients to make your lemon uh, curd tart for making a lemon curd you have your lemon juice your egg yolks lemon rind sugar uh, this is also known as zest now this rind zest I'll again give you a revision you've done in culinary term again I'll be talking on stressing on lemon zest lemon color and lemon essence now I'm making a star here when we put lemon essence we have to be very much cautious or careful if we put few more drops again the entire custard will uh, will be Horrible, I would say. Horrible means it will not taste good. It will taste bitter because of the essence. Essence is very strong. Now, how to make this custard? You start with your sugars. Okay, you take your caster now. Okay, first sugar is caster. You take your caster sugar and your egg yolks. You mix it. Okay, nicely. You add your lemon juice and you uh, simultaneously add your all the ingredients. And last will be your lemon essence. You take everything and you will be again taking a double boil. Again, you will be taking a double boiler and you will be using that egg yolks today again to thicken your custard. Okay, everything will be kept in a double boiler and you will be using a whisk here, not a wooden spoon. After whisking everything, you will see the sugar will melt. Okay, you will see the egg yolks will start uh, thickening your custard. Once you see the egg yolks have thickened up completely, it's a nice thick custard. You can remove it from the flame. Now remember, again, the care, now what is this? I just told you that I will be talking about this. Lemon zest or lemon rind is nothing but the outer covering of your skin of the lemon. So if you take the outer skin of the lemon, that is your lemon zest, okay, or lemon rind. Very flavorful, okay, it has a nice uh, flavor that will give you a curd. Now, lemon uh, curd, okay, tart I told about. So, how to make a lemon curd tart? You take your tarts, you break them blind, okay, without any filling. Once it is done, okay, you take your custard, you put it, and you serve it to the guests. Now, again I will be repeating what care you have to take here. I just told about your water. The water should not be touching the bowl, it should be double boiler and you will be whisking. If you leave and you go here and there, again your custard will be gone bad. Why? The egg yolk will overcook, okay? And it will split. See, what is overcooking? You all have heard of scramble egg. You don't want something in your, your scramble egg in any of your pastry cream. Remember, any pastry cream that has egg yolk, and we've seen a lot of pastry, that has the basic thickness that is your egg yolk only and starch. Now again in this recipe, if you see many recipes, if you go and search online, you will be getting many recipes where they are be adding your cornstarch. Cornstarch again thickens your custard. But when you are adding cornstarch, once you are adding cornstarch, you have to not put it on a double boiler, you have to take it on the gas and you have to whisk it. Because that gelatinization of starch will not happen and you will get a very raw, flabby taste that you don't want in your custard. So if you want your custard to be more thick, Okay, more stable, you can add some amount of cornstarch or corn flour, okay, slurry of and but you need to cook it on the flame directly on the gas. Okay, now lemon juice should not be too much again, depending on the recipe. Okay, you will be adding uh, accordingly the lemon juice, otherwise, it will be too sour. So, you need to balance the acidity of lemon juice by addition of your pasta sugar, and definitely, this also to be not to be much again, it can uh, kill your sauce or your custard. Now, where do we use this custard or this lemon curd apart from your uh, uh, tart? There is something very popular dish known as lemon uh, uh, Florida lemon key pie, very popular. Okay, now why it is called a key pie? Again, here we are talking about lemon, okay, or the lime, which is of this kind. Now, what is key lime? Key lime is a variety of lime which is green in color. If you see the normal uh, lime which you get yellowish in color, that is ripened one. Okay, so we are not talking, so we are gonna plug these uh, key lime, they are plugged, okay, when they are raw. Okay, so they are yellow in color, green in color and then they are plugged and then they are sold in the market. So you get one of the type of uh, lime that is lime key and you take, you take those lime for making your custard because the acidity is too much and you get more flavor than your normal uh, lemon. Line. Now, see the color of the custard. That color definitely comes by addition of some lemon color. So, you will be adding few drops of lemon color to retain the color of your. There will be some color you will be getting from egg yolks. Remember, lecithin, lecithin is the only emulsifier that will be making your sauce today. So, without phospholipid lecithin, okay, you won't be able to make that uh, custard that is present naturally in the egg yolk. So, you have to be making it clearly in your head that when you are making your custard, you do not need to overcook. Once you overcook your custard, everything is gone, everything is spits up and you don't need to use that custard. 
Okay, everyone, the last topic left for the day that is your preparation and care in production. Now, I just spoke about all the custards. Yes, that boy. Yes, please tell me all the custards that I told. Yes, creme anglaise. Very good, creme patisserie. Creme caprice. Yes, yes. Come on, try, you can do it. Yes. Okay. See, he cannot answer all this custard I just told him. So, you should be an effective listener here. Now, I will be again talking about all your basic custard that I just spoke in my previous talk. First one, we started with creme anglaise, then we had creme patisserie, then we had your creme chibouste, creme uh, uh, plombios, creme chantilly, okay, and lemon curd. Now, we are going to talk about the care and uh, preparation that we are going to keep in mind and what things, the do, basically the do's and don'ts of making your custard. First is tempering. I just spoke about tempering in my first custard that I taught. That was your creme anglaise. Guys, remember, this word is very, very, very popular when we talk about food. Now, I also told you something about tempering of chocolate when I was giving you demo of almond rocks. Now, tempering, the word tempering, one thing should be coming in your mind that is temperature. One word that speaks about is temperature. I also told you cooking is all about your application and withdrawal of heat. So, one thing that you see is you are withdrawing the, the heat from the gas. Okay. Now, here what tempering you have to do, whenever you are making a creme anglaise, your creme patisserie or any pastry cream, you take that egg yolk sugar and you temper them. In other words, you need to put that hot milk and you make sure that everything is at the same temperature. And then you can keep it for double boil. So, here the second thing that I will be using here now because that is a very very important thing again that double boiler will help you to keep everything at the right temperature if you do not use double boiler what happens again your custard might be splitting it will be chances of curdling you know why because that egg yolks will start coagulating i also told you the temperature of egg yolk that coagulates 60 degrees centigrade so you do not want your bowl of your the steel bowl to be touching okay it should be it should be on a double boiler and that heat must be enough to coagulate to cook your custard or to thicken your sauces. So remember that egg yolk inside should not be cooking, should not be coagulating, should be only thickening your custard or your sauce. So double boiler is very 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 important. Double boiler has to be utilized if you are using, if you are making any custard or direct flame, what will happen it will be burning or it will be not happening according to the recipe what you want. Now, I just spoke about tempering guys, I am repeating again what I just uh, what, what I just told you. Tempering is nothing but you need to temper your liquids. So whatever you are using your milk, your milk should be tempered at the right temperature. You need to use that milk, okay, it should be boiling hot. Once you boil the milk, you add yolks and sugar, you are mixing them. You take that boiling milk and you add in your mixture, little by little, and you bring that egg yolks and sugar at the right temperature. Then you take that, you put it on a double boiler and you keep cooking your custard. Now once you see your thickening is happening, you remove it from the gas, now you can flavor the custard. Okay, flavoring. Now flavoring can depend what you are adding. If you are adding your basic vanilla, if you want to make them, anglais definitely is flavored with vanilla. You can add vanilla. Most of the custard, 90% is flavored with vanilla. Okay. Now you can use essence also, you can use vanilla powder also. Vanilla powder is very expensive, vanilla essence is readily available in the market as well. Now, I gave you also example of lemon curd where we add lemon rind as a flavoring agent and lemon essence. Now, again one of the most, now this thing which I have highlighted in red, I will be talking at the end because that is the thing that we don't want. Okay, so I am making a cross here, that is an indication that we don't want that skin formation and how to avoid that skin formation. Addition of sugar again very very important. Now whatever sugar we are using in the custard, mostly it is custard sugar, the most preferred because it gets dissolved very quickly. If I am making anglais, if I am making patisserie, if I am making chibus, any custard I will be using mostly custard sugar. Even for your lemon curd I will be using custard sugar. Now what sugar does to the custard? Sugar acts as an advantage for the egg yolks. Now how? Now I told you in semester 1 and I also told you in this semester that sugar is always hydroscopic in nature. Sugar does have water, yes. And that sugar will help you to control your temperature again. It will let you balance the temperature. Okay, it will not make your uh, custard in the bowl to reach the high temperature. You know why? Because the sugar will melt. So that sugar acts as an advantage for you when you make it. So whenever you are adding sugar, you will be very cautious. Never add sugar. When you tempering also, you should not add all the sugar. Little by little you add the sugar, you miss 
and then you take everything on the bowl and then you keep stirring okay with the help of a wooden spoon if you're making anglis so when you see that sugar will start melting the egg yolks will not reach to the coagulation temperature so the temperature of the egg yolk will come down that is what we are trying to explain you about so remember addition of sugar because sugar is hygroscopic in nature and it leaves a lot of moisture when you make your custard it will help you not to curdle your egg yolk or cook your egg yolk so that will help you to give you sweetness and again it will help you to make your product more sweet now last thing and not the least that is your skin formation right how to avoid the skin formation now i told you there is chances of skin formation even in your savory sauces we spoke about bechamel and white sauce now who can tell me the difference between bechamel and white sauce at the bowl tell me okay again i didn't get the answer i'll just give you an example again i've taught you in semester 1 what is bechamel and basic white sauce in bechamel you infuse the milk with glue okay now what is glue who can answer what is glue yes that girl yes got the need correct so glue is nothing but your onion belly and cloves are together and infused in milk that milk when you making okay when you using for your bechamel that is your the right milk that you are using that is your glue uh, infused milk in your sauce bechamel okay so you take your white roux and you add your milk you become you make your bechamel so whenever when we make bechamel and when we do not do this step again there will be skin formation so what the tip the chef does uh, give to the students or when you do it in the practical also i taught you we need to add some amount of butter that butter will not help you to give you a skin formation on the top so addition of uh, butter will help you to avoid your skin formation on your custard similarly in savory custard okay any custard you make if you don't want the skin formation okay that skin will only come because of the milk okay milk has some amount of fat i told you whether even you using a skimmed milk okay whole milk you using skim milk you using there will be some amount of fat skim milk also has some amount of 0.5% of fat in the milk so that fat will give you skin formation we when we boil milk at home also you will be seeing there is a skin formation on the top so that skin formation we don't want okay in your so how to do that first step is the two ways first step first way very simple you take your sauce you cook it okay you put some butter and you cover it second what you can do you can take the clean foil okay the plastic wrap and you can put that plastic wrap inside your sauce so again in that way okay you put that so that the moisture comes out okay the heat comes out pop it up with the knife you don't want the steam to be formed and you see that is done that class that plastic wrap will be uh, touching your custard so there won't be any skin formation and your custard will be nice smooth and the right uh, consistency and the right uh, form you want after thank you